What is up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Not So Stupid Podcast. Today, we're going to be breaking down what a calorie deficit really is. And the reason I started this podcast, or thought of the idea for this podcast, rather, is because of how people approached me about their fat loss goals. Now, if you've been following me for the long, for a long time, whether that's on social media or on the podcast, you know that if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to lose fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. Now, this can get misconstrued to where people think calorie deficit is a type of diet. And I know this because of how people have approached me asking about what to do for their fat loss. They'll say, I've been doing a calorie deficit, but I haven't lost weight. And if you have been doing a calorie deficit, by definition, you have to lose weight. If you're not losing weight, by definition, you're not in a calorie deficit. And beyond that, a calorie deficit isn't something that you do like other, any other kind of diet. It's not like keto, you do keto. It's not like paleo where you do paleo. You're not doing a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is something that is happening because of a mathematical equation. So going deeper into this, and we'll break down what this means and what it looks like as we go through this, but the basic definition of a calorie deficit is burning more calories than you're consuming. So if you're watching this you know this is going to be one of the first youtube podcasts if you're watching this you're going to have a cool equation over my head and it's going to say calorie calories in less than calories out and that means you can reduce the calories you eat and burn more calories or i'm sorry it means consuming fewer calories while maintaining calorie output maintaining calories burned and that'll lead to weight loss because you're going to be using stored calories or likewise, you can maintain your calories eaten, so whatever you're eating on a regular basis, and just increase activity. So it's not just how you're eating, it's also how many calories you're burning. It's a balance of both of these. If you change both sides of the equation, that's going to influence whether you gain or lose weight. So going further into this, before you can even get into a calorie deficit, you need to understand your caloric maintenance. And that is the amount of calories it takes for you to maintain the weight that you're at. This is gonna be your North Star. This is the starting point on your journey. If you don't know what your caloric maintenance is for where your body is right now, you can't accurately and effectively be in a calorie deficit for the long run. It's just not gonna happen. Because if you don't understand that, you're going you're gonna hit a stall in weight loss or you might not lose weight at all, and you're gonna wonder why without knowing without even, you're going to wonder why, because you don't know the other variables that are going to come into play with this. So breaking it down a little further, you want to start with your caloric maintenance, like we said. And the way that you do that is by measuring how many calories you're eating on a regular basis uh, for at least a week. You want to count your calories and see what your regular intake is, because everyone's caloric maintenance is going to be a little different because of dietary history, because of their physical makeup, because of the types of job that they have, how much sleep they get, the type of training that they do, everyone's metabolism is going to vary. So you want to figure out what your caloric intake is that's going to maintain your weight. So by doing that, you measure not just the food that you're eating on a week, on a week uh, for a week straight, and then you're going to average out what that is on a daily average. You're going to also see what kind of activity you're doing and how often you're doing that activity. And there's two main types of activity you want to be measuring. One is the exercise activity, which is the actual training that you do. You want to, whether you have a fitness tracker or you log your workouts, whatever the case may be, you want to measure in some way how much work you're doing. Okay, so with a fitness tracker, I recommend viewing it as how many how much time you spend in different heart rate zones more than your calories burned because that's going to vary a lot and it's going to change a lot especially through your journey but looking at how much activity you're doing in terms of how intense your activity is are you in a uh, heart rate zone five the red heart rate zone where your heart rate is your heart feels like it's going to bounce out of your chest that for multiple hours a week are you in a very low heart rate doing regular activity steady activity multiple times a week what does your activity look like? How frequently are you doing it? And what heart rate zones are you averaging in? That uh, is going to be one of the measures for your calories out, the calories that you're burning. And this is going to be a very basic breakdown of what your calories out are going to look like. Obviously, if you want a more in-depth breakdown, there is a metabolism episode 
uh, really early on, probably in the teens, that I recorded breaking down all the different aspects of your metabolism, which is all the different ways you burn calories. But uh, the two easiest ways to measure how much calories you're burning are going to be exercise activity, like we said, and then NEAT activity. So this is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's the acronym for NEAT. And the way you measure NEAT activity is how many steps you take in a day, which is where a fitness tracker can be really helpful for you. So just seeing how many steps you're averaging on a day-to-day -day basis, and then seeing how often you do your exercise, how often you uh, are in different heart rate zones throughout the week, that'll give you a good rough estimate for what your current um, energy expenditure is your current calorie out your calories out is how many calories you're burning both of those together are going to make that up and then logging your food consistently is going to lead to uh, help you understand how many calories you're consuming regularly on a daily basis so you have the two sides of the equation once again so calories in versus calories out calories out is how many calories you're burning calories in is how many calories you're consuming now, you're never actually going to know precisely how many calories you're burning. Like I said earlier, all fitness trackers are off. They're never going to be actually accurate, and they can be as much as 60% off in some cases. So they're, they're worse than guessing in a lot of cases. So um, definitely don't add value to the number of calories that you're burning. They can be a cool, helpful gauge, but uh, for the most part, you want to measure your activity in NEAT, how many steps you're doing, and in how much time you're spending in different heart rate zones. Those are going to be the best gauges for what you're doing. Now, when you know those two things, and you know that you've been doing this much activity, let's say you're averaging five, 5,000 steps a day, and you're in heart rate zone three for, you know, five hours a week, so you train five hours a week, you have that as your activity, and then you know you're averaging 2,000 calories a day, and that's maintaining your weight, now you just got to change one of those three variables to become to go into a calorie deficit. That doesn't mean you need to change your diet. Is it going to be helpful to change your diet? In a lot of time, in a lot of instances, yes, for sure. You're going to want to change the type of food that you're eating to make it easier to stay in a calorie deficit. You're going to want to change the type of food that you're eating to help you recover from your training. But just on a baseline level, really keeping it as general as possible to apply to as many pe as people as possible you're just going to want to change one of these variables so you're going to change either the need to activity so if you're averaging 5,000 steps you want to bump that up to six or seven thousand a day that is uh, and i should say you're going to you're going to move that up to six or seven thousand a day while maintaining the other two you're maintaining your daily calorie intake of two thousand you're maintaining your daily training or not daily training your weekly training of five hours a week in heart rate zone three but you're increasing your neat activity, all of that will put you in a calorie deficit because now you're burning more calories through extra neat activity than you're putting in. Likewise, you can change, you can keep that variable the same if you feel like walking more in the day is kind of hard for you, which, uh, you know, spoiler alert, it probably shouldn't be hard to add 2,000 steps. That's an extra 10 minutes of walking to commit to your day. But uh, beside the point, if you don't want to add more steps, let's say you're at 10,000 on average and you still want to lose more weight, well, then you can manipulate other variables. You can add exercise activity, whether that is time spent in, a, in the same heart rate zone or, uh, you know, what was the other one? Uh, going into a, heart, a higher heart rate zone for for a period of time. So if you're doing five hours of heart rate zone three, let's say you add, you know, another 30 minutes of heart rate zone five you know so four four and a half hours of heart rate zone three half an hour of heart rate zone five that's an increase in calorie burn throughout the week while maintaining your neat activity and your calorie your calorie intake and that's the important part where most people are missing that is caught that is leading them to think they're in a calorie deficit and the calorie deficit isn't working is that they are subconsciously changing multiple variables at the same time a lot of times people will change their diet the lower their calorie intake but they'll also move less you know and that's why it's important to track these things you'll move less in terms of neat activity because when you eat less calories your body wants to conserve energy and when it wants to conserve energy it's going to cause you to move less because if you move less you're not going to use as much energy pretty straightforward your body doesn't uh, as harsh as it sounds your body doesn't care whether or not you lose weight your body cares about survival and you need to overcome that instinct your body's natural instinct of doing that and the best way to do that is by creating awareness about what's happening and without tracking you're not going to know what's happening so setting so continuing off of where we were going you want to 
if you're going to change one thing, you need to make sure that the other variables are staying where they're at, uh, at least staying where they're at, if not heading in the other direction as well. So uh, again, you know, you can add the exercise activity, you can add neat activity while maintaining your calorie intake. Or if you feel like, you know, you don't want to move more, you don't have the time to move more, which are, again, self-limiting beliefs. It's just going to depend on where you're at with your schedule and your time use. But if you feel like it's easier for you to eat less or you feel like you eat a lot of junk food and you want to eat cleaner, which is going to lead to eating less calories, then you can keep your exercise activity the same. You can keep your neat activity the same. So keeping it at the 5,000 steps that we said originally, keeping it at the five hours of a heart rate zone three activity a week, and then reduce your calorie intake to uh, 300 or 300 calories less per day. So that would be 1,700 calories. So now you're eating less calories than you're burning for what was maintaining your weight. And that puts you in a calorie deficit. So a calorie deficit, once again, it's not a type of diet that you're doing. It's a something that is it's something that's always happening to you. So you're doing it through doing a certain amount of activity. You're doing it through do, eating a certain amount of calories and maintaining that consistency. So that's the important thing. Again, keeping all the variables consistent for the one variable that you do change. You can't add activity and then also treat yourself to some extra calories because then you're going to average out to zero net calories. You're not going to be in a calorie deficit. You'll be at caloric maintenance once again, because you added activity and you added calorie calories consumed. So now, you know, it's like adding 10 to both sides of the equation. I don't know how many of you have still kept up with algebra in this time, but uh, th that's going to lead to a net zero change. Now, uh, likewise, if you just added the activity, but you kept the calories the same, you fought through the extra hunger that happened as a result of added training, uh, then you'll be in a calorie deficit. Again, it's uh, I really want to push this point across that this isn't a diet that you're doing. All diets put you in a calorie deficit if you maintain your activity because they find different ways to reduce calorie intake. That's how all diets work. And likewise, all types of training, all of the, and this is why like Orange Theory, F45, those types of things are so popular right now. They're putting people in a higher calorie outtake or higher calorie expenditure than they normally would be. It's not that this training is magical, it's that they're forcing you to burn more calories. And if you maintain the calories that you eat, you'll lose weight. That's how it works. So it's manipulating one of the variables at a time, ideally, um, to create, to put yourself in a deficit. You're putting yourself in a deficit, you're never actually doing a deficit, okay? And uh, that perspective shift can really alter how you perform different things. Because now when you realize that it's not just how you eat, it's not just how you move, it's both of them in conjunction with each other working synergistically, you're going to put both of them at a higher priority and, and uh, push for accomplishing more of those things consistently to help get to your goal. So now clarifying on one thing that I said, and that is change one thing at a time. Uh, this is really important. You don't want to, like in theory, based on what I'm saying, you're, you would tell yourself, oh, if I decrease calories and increase my activity at the same time, I'll lose weight so much faster. In theory, that's true. But in practical application, that's one, super hard. And two, very, what's the word? Very uh, mis misery ensuing. Miser it's just, it's just, it just sucks. All right. It just sucks. I'm not, I'm not even trying to make a hard word for it. It sucks because you're going to be you're going to put yourself at, you're not going to help your body recover the way that it should from the added activity because you took away so many calories at the same time. And that's going to lead to poor biofeedback. So your energy levels are going to drop. Your mood is going to, you're going to have crazy mood swings. You're going to have really high appetite or really no appetite, both of which aren't necessarily healthy. You're going to have trouble sleeping. For women, you're going to have bad uh, cycle health. All of those things are going to come as a result from being in too big of a deficit right and that's it's you want your body to be healthy while you go through this process because the easier it is to go through this process the the easier it's going to be for you to see results for one and the longer that the weight is going to stick off of you because now you're creating a sustainable process for yourself as opposed to forcing yourself to sprint through this really difficult thing for a period of time and then go back to your old eating habits and gain the weight again and go through this cycle change one thing at a time stay consistent with that one change so if you're going to add 3,000 steps, you're going to go from 5,000 to 8,000, maintain your exercise and maintain your calorie intake. Do that for do that for two, three weeks. You'll likely con continuously see results over that time period. 
Um, and then once you hit a stall, then you can change something else. Because if it's working, why would you change? Why would you change it again? Why would you change even more? So just being mindful of that, making sure that you're giving yourself options in the future for if you hit a stall, and you're allowing yourself the ability to maintain consistency for the long run, so that these habits don't die. They're not going to lead you to rebounding and weight gain. They're not going to lead you to um, binge attacks in the future. They're they're sustainable for you in the short and the long term. So changing one thing at a time is important. Um, but let's recap how we're gonna go through this, what a calorie deficit is and why and how you can manage it for the long term is one, calorie deficit isn't something that you do. It's not a type of diet. It's something that's happening to you. And that is through manipulating either your calories burned through exercise activity and need activity or manipulating your calories in, which is how many calories you're eating in a day. To start off, you need to know what your caloric maintenance is, how much activity you're regularly doing on a regular basis and how much calories you're regularly eating on a regular basis and uh, making sure that that's averagely uh, on average maintaining the weight that you're having once you figure that out then you can start playing with the variables then you can start adding neat activity or adding exercise activity or reducing calorie intake wait for results with that and then create a change afterwards I always recommend before you make a second adjustment, wait at least two weeks before making that second adjustment because sometimes your body is res your body is really resistant to change in a lot of uh, instances. And when you make a change, it's going to try your its hardest to not let go of the fat because again, its main priority is survival. But if you give it enough time and you're con and you're persistent enough in your effort to do this thing, it'll drop the weight pretty fast. I've seen I've had clients that will will make an adjustment one week, two weeks go by, sometimes even three weeks go by and nothing changes. Their weight stays the same, their weight lifted stays the same, their body feels the same, but then five pounds go down in one week. That That's a really common thing that happens, but it doesn't happen unless you're patient and persistent with, excuse me, with what you're doing. So uh, before making any kind of change, before making a second adjustment, I should say, stick with the first adjustment for two, two weeks, uh, I would say, and then make a second adjustment. Because sometimes you'll make an adjustment that isn't aggressive enough or is it on the opposite end of things. It's too aggressive and it causes you, again, poor biofeedback. You feel tired all the time, all that kind of stuff. So uh, don't be afraid to make adjustments as needed. Don't be afraid to take a step back if you're too aggressive. Don't be afraid to be a little more aggressive and uh, if you're not seeing the results you want to see in the time frame. So that is basic breakdown of calorie deficit. Hope this shed some light on what a calorie deficit really is and how to accomplish it. If this is something that you have more questions about for your specific situation or you're not sure, uh, you know, about anything that I said, feel free to reach out, you know, send me an email, juma, J-U-M-H-A at stupid.fit, and I'm more than happy to reply to you. Or you can even message me on Instagram, Instagram handle at stupid.fit. So wherever you want to reach out to me, I'm always open to listen to you guys and answer your questions. Um, but otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys on the next one.